that not my name? Goodbye, everybody, and welcome to another horrible episode of Bizarro Style. I'm not your host, Bizarro, and I am here to present the February preview. We just got information on February, and I wanted to give you a preview of what February will look like. Uh, first, uh, I want to talk about a couple new things with the show. Uh, the first thing is I now have a Patreon page. Uh, if you're not familiar with Patreon, Patreon is a way that you can support um, the show. And if you want to make a monthly donation, it goes towards me producing the show. I'm certainly not trying to make any uh, profits off of it. And some of the money I can even use to put into characters so I can do more character reviews uh, and get you the information you need to make decisions. The other thing is you should be able to see on my screen here I have some new technology where I'm actually playing DC Legends on my computer with my mouse so you can see I can scroll around and I'll be able to click on stuff and show it to you uh, which will really help with the show and um, actually make collaboration a little easier and speaking of collaboration I actually have a guest with me tonight I have Kal-El with me Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me, Kal-El. So for those of you who don't know Kal-El, Kal-El is the leader of the Knights of Rao and has actually become a very good friend of mine in the game. And, you know, I don't want to embarrass you, but I just want to tell you how much I've appreciated your friendship and support in the game because there's been many times where I've been frustrated by things. And as another leader, you've been there to support me. So I appreciate that. Oh, well, no problem, man. It's been, it's been a likewise collaboration, that's for certain. So, um, tell, the, tell the viewers about the Knights of Rao. Why did you choose that name? What, what does that mean? Uh, well, the, the Knights of Rao are a... Um, they don't exist in, like, say, comics, really. They, at least not that I know of. Um, I just came up with the idea that uh, I wanted to be a... Uh, have our group to be a, a like an elite group of, of players. Um, not to say that we're better than anybody or anything, but to, you know, just elite amongst ourselves. Uh, maybe is what I'm more going for. But Rao is the sun god of Kryptonians, of Krypton. And um, kind of like in the same vein as, uh, oh, like uh, the Knights of, uh, oh man, I'm spacing on the uh, on the uh, on my history. Uh, the Knights Templar. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's they they were the elite uh, elite uh, you know knights of of, of God, and uh, <clears throat> not to be religious or anything or or even step over that line, but um, I thought it kind of interesting to to throw a you know that kind of uh, kind of spin on uh, on our alliance. Yeah, I thought it was um, pretty cool the way you did that. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, yeah, it's, we started our, our group in what September of last year. Uh, a lot of we, what makes that group really really good is my officers and my players. Really, I mean, they I can't take any credit. They they are what makes that that alliance is what it is. Yeah, you were oh, nice yeah. enough to allow me to be on your server. And um, I really enjoyed getting to know the people in your alliance and talking with them. There's some really nice folks over there. So thank you yeah. for that. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, so who knew that Bizarro and Kal-El would end up doing a show together, right? Um, yeah, right. But I think, you know, it's one of the misconceptions that Bizarro and Superman are enemies because they're not really enemies. It's just Bizarro goes on these rage fits sometimes that Superman has to stop him from. And and Lord knows you have stopped some of my rage fits sometimes. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I, yeah, those those were fun times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it comes with the territory of being a leader. Um, when did you start playing DC Legends? Oh gosh, um, I think I started. Uh, I think it was tail end of January of 2017. Um, I remember just starting the game. Um, a friend of mine from work at the time suggested I do I do that to uh, on my breaks. 
so I can nail and not smoke. So um, didn't work, by the way, but it <laughs> it it, uh, it, it's, uh, it 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 got me started in a whole different addiction. Um, so yeah, I remember it being around that time. I think because I I had to go look it up because uh, the uh, Arcus event, the tail end of the Arcus event, the very right. first one. Uh, was happening at the time, and I couldn't play it because I all had all you know all new guys that couldn't do well anything. Uh, so yeah, so I started then, and then I um, I played for like maybe a month, and I I don't know, I just got bored with it, or I don't know what happened, but I dropped the game for about three months and then picked it back up. Uh, I can't remember what the the hero challenge was at that time, but right. I played I played it the rest of that year. Um, pretty consistently, joined a pretty g- good group at the time um, the, uh, when alliances started, and uh, and then I, t- I I left the game for approximately about a year until I came back uh, last uh, last uh, April uh, I think of 2018. Right. So I'm, I'm not going anywhere now. So yeah, I'm, I'm glad you came back. Um. So, what attracted you to the game when you first started playing? Uh, the 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 strategy of it actually really attracted me to it. But of course, it was the, the <clears throat> it was that it was DC characters that had really brought me to it. I'm I'm a comics guy. I I have an enormous collection of comics I've been collecting all my life. So, and and DC comics is number one amongst that uh, that that's uh, that love. So that's yeah. but that's really what brought me to the game in the first place and can is keeping me there and i have to say you you reignited my passion for dc comics and i'm gonna share with the viewers something you were gonna do for me is i'm a huge firestorm fan and you were totally prepared to give me your firestorm number one out of your collection and then as luck would have it i had gone over to a bookstore and somebody marked it for, I think, $3 for a Firestorm number one from the 1970s. And it made it where you didn't end up having to give it up out of your collection, but the gesture was so kind, and I really appreciated that when you found out I was such a huge Firestorm fan. Yeah, that was a fun conversation. Um, uh, yeah, Firestorm is a really, really awesome character, and to find out that you loved him as much as much as you do um yeah it seemed like it absolutely seemed like the right thing to do well i appreciate it do you have a favorite character in the game well i think i might uh uh, uh superman absolutely is my favorite favorite character of all time now in the game maybe not so much but only because he's not where he should be yeah i um, agree i find I find every single reason I can to use him in any way, shape, or form. Um, so I like him more than maybe uh, the above average person in the game. But I have to say probably my favorite uh, tune in the game is probably Reverse Flash. That's a good he's choice. Just so, yeah, he's just so devastating and so <clears throat> useful. And, I mean, he even takes some blues uh, when after he gets his uh, his, uh, his his heal. So yeah, he's um, he was when he first came out. Um, all my teammates at the time were were uh, just spending money left and right to you know to L five him like right off the bat, and I couldn't even uh, couldn't even get him get him past L one at the time. And I was so green. It's uh, funny because he's one of the first uh, PVP tournament rewards I can remember when I started. So um, it's funny you say that. Yeah, yeah, it was a, uh, it was, it was super, super fun, and super interesting at the time when he was uh, introduced, and I felt so, so remiss that I couldn't take, you know, I couldn't share in that, uh, that excitement. So when he, when we had the, the event this last, uh, last year, I took full advantage of it. I was finally able to, to get him to, um, almost L five. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, that's I've, I've been used. I, before then, I used Flash a lot, uh, and I still really love Flash. But oh my God, I use Reverse Flash probably about ten times as much as I, I ever use Flash now. So. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's, he's a definitely good character. A yeah, very, very fun. Um, so uh, just so the viewers know, I, I got you to agree, whether you like it or not, to join me each month to do this preview um, whenever they roll out the new information for the audience. So I, I appreciate you doing that with me. Yeah, no problem. It's gonna, it's gonna be a blast. Should we? So should we get? Should we roll into it? Yeah, let's get started, man. All right. So what we'll do is we'll do the new characters, then the reworks, and then we'll talk about the events that are coming up for this month. And what we're gonna try to do is each month, uh, being I'm Bizarro and he's Kal El, I'll take the villain and he'll take the hero, unless there's uh, two heroes or two villains. Then we'll find another way to split it up. <clears throat> so let's get started with Black Mask, the Crime King. Um, so uh, I'm not going to read the description of the character because we're going to talk about the lore of the character a little bit afterward. Uh, so I'm just going to jump right into the superpowers. Uh, the first one is the Weakening Shot, Light Damage, and Always Apply Two Strength Downs, which last one turn, Two Agility Downs, which last one turn, three bleeds, which lasts three turns, and 60% chance to silence, which lasts one turn, uh, an enemy. The legendary will be a call assist from random teammate if Black Mask has any immunity. The second ability is Crime Lord. Apply taunt for one turn to an ally and call their assist. Black Mask gains one critical immunity for two turns. And the legendary will be a 40% chance to call second assist which that chance can go up by 40 percent if any enemy is overhealed uh the third one is the Sionis or Sionis I'm not sure how you pronounce that legacy uh which is damage to an enemy plus 12 percent damage per debuff on the target for a max of 10 which means you can do a max of 120 percent extra damage and then damage also increases by 45 percent to overhealed targets with a legendary of 5% um, chance per debuff on the target to use again on a random target. Uh, the Obsidian Protection start battle with crit immunity for one turn, 40% chance to gain crit immunity uh, for one turn at the start of each enemy turn. And the legendary ability is also apply two strength downs for two turns and two agility downs on that enemy. And finally, even the odds, whenever an ally dies, Black Mask gains crit immunity for two turns and applies um, three strength down for two turn, three agility down for two turn, two buff immunity for two turn, and 30% turn meter down to the enemy team with a legendary upgrade of apply two strength ups uh, to all allies when uh, called to assist by Black Mask. Um, and then you can see, we can see the stats for Black Mask, uh, the strength rating of a base stat of 1391 plus, uh, 1040, uh, agility is 1571 plus 710, stamina is 1594 plus 925, intelligence is 1407 plus 205, and the hit points will end up being... 31,538 and he has pretty good speed at 121. So um, what do you think? Uh, what did you think when you saw the kit? I actually think this looks like a good kit. Uh, well, when I was going over it, the I think the one that really, well, there's two really that really uh, stand out to me, the, the Weakening Shot and Crime Lord. Those, I mean, th those two combined are, are going to really, uh, they're going to be calling their teammates and beating the living snot out of the other team. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. And um... so, many, so many of the uh, of call assist, it's, I mean, it was like, were we, were we looking at what, at least two? Two call assists, or were we talking about three? No, three, we're talking about three, possibly. Yeah, it with a reminds me percent. of uh, St. Walker, and it seems like they're really getting into the um, these call assists now. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, I remember a teammate uh, was uh, trying to, to daisy chain uh, the call assist loop, but uh, unfortunately it didn't quite work out to their advantage. 
my DC Legends locked up, so I'm having to go back in there again. Um, yeah, I think uh, the other thing I, the, the one thing I did not like about the kit is if you look at his legendary ability, the even the odds. I, I'm never a fan of any kit that relies on your teammates dying um, because I like to plan to win three star and not plan to lose. So um, whenever I see an ability that's based on uh, teammates dying, I'm never that thrilled about it. Yeah, same here. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, Constantine lead teams uh, yes. just annoy the living uh, you know what out of me. I, I just can't stand that. This is not a strategy that I subscribe to. Um, I yeah, mean, cause... if I have to, if I have to use uh, death immunity or yeah, uh, revive characters as a strategy, I'm pretty desperate. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh... You know, and it's always a bigger advantage on defense than it is on offense. And so um, I, I don't like that aspect of it either. But it's funny that you mentioned Constantine because this ability reminds me exactly of Constantine's uh, leadership ability. And um, yeah. so that's probably where you have the frustration from, right? Oh, yeah, it's precisely where I have the frustration from. I have... Uh... I've come close. Well, no, I've not come close. I've actually thrown my phone because of uh, <laughs> Constantine teams. Um, and even when I finally win, it feels like such a cheap victory because uh, I don't know. I, I just think that the strategy is is uh, is I don't know ridiculous. It, it's I mean, yeah, they they win, but at, at, at what cost do they win? I mean, they get yeah. a one star. Oh boy. The other one that I thought was um, pretty interesting is the Subsidian Protection we're looking at, uh, which really seems to give him crit immunity. So he gets the crit immunity at the beginning, but then chance to have crit immunity at the start of enemy turns, which is, to me, really beneficial for a team leader. Oh, good lord, yes. Uh, it's, he's going to be able to do, he's going to be able to control the, uh, can do have a lot, he's going to be a good control character. Just for that reason alone. Yeah. And, and you know, what's the, interesting the is... You... Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's all good. Go ahead. I was going to say, what's interesting is, being I'm not really wedded to that leadership ability, it seems like he'll actually still be pretty good to run even out of lead. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine was suggested uh, using uh, a black mask with a Constantine lead. Um, oh, okay. That, that's uh yeah I, I bet we're probably going to see that quite way way more than we're going to want to <laughs> um but uh but yeah it's a it's a it's an interesting uh note that uh that one friend of mine he's uh he's pretty on top of uh strategy is in general yeah well um so we were going to talk about the comic book lore a little bit of the new characters um, so Black Mask was introduced in August of 1985 in Batman number 386. And um, the reason the name is called Sionis or Sionis Legacy, I'm not sure what's the right pronunciation, um, is because his name is Roman Sionis and he's from the Sionis family, uh, which is this really upper echelon elite family in Gotham and uh, even has a history with Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne's family. And the reason he becomes known as Black Mask is because he always had this sort of fixation on masks. And when he is trying to burn down Wayne Manor in the process of fighting with Batman, uh, it happens that his mask gets burned onto his face permanently. So he cannot remove the mask anymore. Um, it was interesting for me, and, and maybe you can talk about your experience here in a second, but my first introduction to red hood was actually or i just kind of did a freudian slip there but my introduction to black mass was through uh red hood and uh reading red hood in the outlaws and seeing uh under the red hood the animated movie so i i really like the character but my exposure was first through red hood as opposed to the batman comics 
Have, yeah, I understand his his uh, his involvement in that story. Those that storyline was actually pretty heavy and actually really good. <clears throat> so that's a, that's a pretty good introduction to him. I I, I agree because um, he's no slouch when it comes to intelligence. Um, so I, I enjoy the character. Um, yeah, yeah, he's he's re- he's really good villain just in general. Any other thoughts on Black Mask, or do you want to move ahead? Oh, well, uh, Black Mask, uh, one of the things that is not as known, uh, except for maybe, you know, uh, comic book freaks like myself, <laughs> is that his, conne- his connection to uh, um, Selena Kyle is really, really, one's really, really deep as well. Um, I know that. For those of you, yeah, for those of you, uh, of you out there that uh, are big Catwoman fans, you guys should know uh, uh, Black Mask's name pretty well. Um, I'm not going to say any spoilers about it, but anybody that wants to learn about that, um, you can read, um, uh, I believe it's, uh, I think it's volume two um, of Catwoman. Um, I can't remember the issue numbers, but um, it, it's it's very interesting to see how, um, the, the, how, the, how connected the DC Universe can be. Yeah. Uh, I mean, his, his connection to Bruce Wayne is really runs really deep and really far back, and his connection to Selina Kyle uh, is is pretty uh, pretty pretty crazy. So, yeah, um, he's a, he's a great character. Um, as far as the his, his involvement in the new Birds of Prey movie, I always remain silent on that because I know there's a lot of people out there that are excited for that movie. Yeah, and I don't want to discourage the, that in any way. Yeah, I, I, I forgot to mention the movie, which is, of course, why they've added him to the game. So I'm glad you uh, reminded me and pointed that out. Oh, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's move on to Cassandra Cain, um, who was somebody I didn't really know a lot about. Uh, and you will take the lead on this one. All right. All right, Cassandra Cain, the one who is all... Uh, let's go right into her powers. Uh, let's see. Well, I think this one might be a typo, but I'll go I'll run with it. Death with. Uh, it sounds <laughs> like death, 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 death wish with a lisp. Yeah, it is death uh, wish. If you look at the screen, uh, the it's correct in the game. They must have had it wrong in the description. Okay. All right, that's good. Uh, damage to an enemy. Uh, apply 50% additional damage if Cassandra is invisible. Uh, legendary is apply buff immunity for one turn on target. That's going to be very handy. Uh, the next one is the falling leaf technique. Uh, light damage to an enemy and apply heal immunity on target for one turn. Gain five evasion ups one turn and invisible invisibility one turn. Legendary is purge three buffs on target. That's also good. Uh, Bat Swarm, uh, damage to all enemies, AOE attack. Apply five bleeds on targets if Cassandra is invisible. Legendary is apply 20% turn meter down on two random targets. Uh, Now let's see, Shadow Recovery. If Cassandra is invisible at the start of every turn, gain 25% heal and five evasion ups for two turns. Legendary is purge three D buffs on Cassandra. And body reading ability. It's interesting. If Cassandra evades an attack, use Death Wish on the enemy attacker. Legendary is start the battle with invisibility. Very good. Yeah, all I right, think so that's going to be the one you're going to have to take first to get all the other ones activated. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it won't be that way. It won't be gated anymore. Uh, the stats are pretty decent. Uh, strength at 1703 plus 915. Agility is 1572 plus 710. Stamina is 1438 plus 675. Uh, intelligence is uh, 1244 plus 150. And hit points is 21 uh, 132 plus 7600. Uh, and speed is really good. It's what does that equal to? Yeah, Let's 125 see, total. Yeah, that's pretty fast. It is pretty fast. 
I think she's like the third or fourth fastest physical character in the game. Yeah, like under uh, Arsenal, I believe, right? That's correct. Yeah, that's he's, her kid is looking really, really, really nice, actually. Um, yeah, I, I see I, truth of being a, a good way to thwart a lot of it, but um, that's going to be after she does all of her stuff. So, um, One of the things I wonder is um, with those evasion ups, uh, let's say she somebody calls an assist and it calls her, would that count to gain her more evasion ups and a heal? Because if so, she's going to pair very well with St. Walker and... Um, Black Mask. Yeah, Black Mask. So um, Yeah, the more she gets... At least that's how I'm, I'm kind of reading it is if she runs Falling Leaf technique and... Uh, Actually, the shadow recovery—that's uh, that's a uh, a passive. Yeah. Anyway, that's... if you uh, yeah, if one if you runs her um, her uh, falling leaf technique, your second, um, that that's she's gonna gain five evasion ups every time, and invisibility. That's probably why she's only keeping the five evasion ups for one turn. Yeah, that would think so, because otherwise there'd be so many evasion ups that. Be almost yeah. impossible to kill her with the current meta i mean it's there's so many ways to get around evasion um but i still see that being as a as a problem for uh anybody that doesn't have everybody unlocked and at a you know at least an l2 the other thing i was going to say is being able to apply five bleeds on every target on an aoe is pretty darn impressive oh yeah yeah i see her being a part of a uh being a pretty decent a part of uh, uh, bleed teams, which are always popular. And um, just so my viewers know, I do have a video out there on bleed teams in the Synergy series, so you can uh, look for that on my channel. And that way, if you're looking for characters to pair her with, um, uh, you can find it there. And of course, Red Hood, who applies a lot of bleeds, might be a natural team leader to pair her with if you're going for a bleed comp. Yeah, good to keep it in the Bat family too. Exactly. So I've uh, I've already got Huntress up on the screen. Um, do we want to plow forward? Oh, sorry. We want to talk first about the the backstory uh, with Cassandra Kane. And this was one where you were uh, going to take the lead because I had told you before we started recording that I really don't know a lot about her. Uh, amazingly enough. Yeah, she's a she's a really interesting character she uh, uh cassandra kane started out in i think it was year two no, no not year 2000 it was just before that in 1999 and uh debuted in batman 567 um she was uh raised by your father i can't remember his first name at the, at the moment um to be an assassin who him he himself was an assassin uh he completely uh deprived her the ability to uh, read and write and to actually speak really uh, she learned how to communicate with people or how to understand people through entirely through body language mm. uh, which makes which makes her an, an unbelievable hand-to-hand <clears throat> uh, -hand fighter because she can she knows what they're about to do even before they do it um, she, uh, she also has uh, a really interesting history um, uh, her mother uh, is actually the Lady Shiva. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Who is like one of the most devastating hand to hand fighters in the DC universe. So, um, I mean, just from coming from that, uh, that gene pool alone is, uh, is pretty, you know, got a good start. Um, she, she, um, I read her, uh, her, uh, her comic, uh, Batgirl. Uh, I think that came out also in 1999, if I'm not right, if I'm mistaken, maybe in the year, maybe in the following year, 2000, I can't remember. But I remember that comic being extremely, extremely good uh, because it showed her struggle with uh, want, not wanting to be an assassin uh, and to want to do good. And that's, I believe, I, I think it was during the uh, No Man's Land uh, storyline that she actually did decide to become a hero. And thus, that's why she became the, the next Batgirl at that time. 
um, yeah, the the fact that uh, they included that one power, uh, or is it body reading uh, ability? Uh, that just harkens back to her comic book roots uh, uh, for her ability to read body language, uh, and I believe she can still do that, but um, she uh, she lost a little bit of that ability so, so that she can actually talk and understand uh, people, be a little bit more human instead of a killing machine. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, it's uh, anybody that's actually interested in the character definitely read that her her uh, her Batgirl run. Um, it's it's seriously like one of the best one best uh, uh, non Batman titles that I've ever read. That's still in the Bat family. Um, I still need to fill out my collection on those. I'm missing like I don't know about maybe five or six issues uh, so I can read the whole thing from front to uh, front, you know start to begin start to end. Yeah. Well, it definitely sounds interesting to me, and like I said, this is a character I sort of missed out on because this was in the period I stopped collecting comics, so it's something I'm going to try and catch up on my DC Universe app. Um, uh, I guarantee it that. I, that's, yeah, you're going to have some fun reading ahead of you. Well, should we, um, should we move on to the reworks? Yeah, let's, let's get... Do uh, you want to start with Huntress? Um... Yeah, I can. Or, well, you said you were more familiar with this character, so why don't you why don't you start with Huntress and I'll do Vixen. Okay. Um, well, the that's the the rework is live now, so um, anybody that actually had her maxed out, she's probably taken a significant lead in your roster. Uh, I know she certainly did with mine. I only have her at L four, um, so. Um, yeah, she she's, she packs a little bit more punch than she used to. Um, a really a really awesome teammate of mine has already tested her, and um, yeah, her her um, her what is it her, uh, her window of opportunity, the the uh, the last ability, which I'll I'll run through all the abilities here in a minute. Uh, that one, uh, just be sure you have that one uh, selected as your uh, your. Uh, first legendary that you select if you don't if you only have it at L1 because uh, that one's gonna that one's gonna be a devastating so all right let's go run through the powers real quick all right, cool. um, uh, superpowers are merciless shot uh, is damage to an enemy plus 100% crit chance if target is below 50% health and the legendary is 10% uh, true damage to targets below 50% health I don't think that one changed a whole heck of a lot and just, just so my viewers are aware, you can see my Huntress on the screen is not completely upgraded. So when we're reading the superpowers, we're reading them as if the superpowers are completely upgraded. So don't get confused as to what's up on the screen with mine who's not fully upgraded. Uh, let's see. The second one is Birds of Prey. Gain four evasion ups for three turns. 80% chance to gain three speed ups for three turns. And legendary has gained 35% turn meter. Uh, let's see, big hit, heavy damage to an enemy plus 115% damage if enemy is if an enemy is dead. Excuse me, I almost read that in. Read, read, yeah, read I almost wrong. read it as if enemy is dead. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. wait a minute, <laughs> that wouldn't work, right? <laughs> They're already dead. <laughs> uh, legendary has gained three strength ups for three turns if uh, if the target is killed, which is, has a really good chance of doing so. Yeah. Uh, no rest. Uh, hundred percent chance to use birds of prey after killing an enemy on Huntress's turn. Uh, legendary also gained five critical chance ups for three turns. And last but not least. Window of Opportunity, which is brand spanking new, I might add. A lot of people may find this one, uh, they don't have any rings in at all because um, it didn't exist before today. Yeah, that's right. You see, mine's uh, at level one of eight. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I have to wait to the root. I have to get some, a lot more rings to be able to fill that one out. Uh, at the end of each ally's turn, or at each, uh, at, did I read that right? Let's, let's start again. At the end of each ally turn, 70% chance to use the big hit on a random enemy that is 20 below 25% health. Yeah, there's the gate right there, but still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, legendary, always apply heal immunity, uh, zero, which is a zero turn. 
on all Huntress's attacks. Now, what zero turn means is that it's mainly going to focus on uh, revives rather than heals. So if you apply the uh, heal immunity from this ability on to say, I don't know, uh, uh, Barda, uh, she's still going to heal. But uh, if you if you hit, uh, like say, Sinestro White Lantern, um, they're uh, they're they're not going to come back. Yeah, so it means that she's not really a good direct counter to like Lex teams, who are going to be healing a lot. You're right. Yeah, she's she's mainly centered on uh, revive teams, which are probably my most hated team. So I'm going to be using her quite a bit. So uh, I'm not sure how much her stats changed. She's always been a pretty speedy character, um, but. Let's uh, yeah, let's not get into the stats the because you know it makes more sense to talk about the stats for new characters than uh, for the reworks because you're still pretty familiar with all the stats for the characters and they never change a character's speed on a rework. I've never seen that happen. Me neither. Yeah, her, her speed is what really really counts, and I do see her strength is pretty high. So. Um... Yeah, I think they just they maybe upped her strength a little bit. Um, it, it's been said that her her basic still doesn't hit have the hit behind it that I that, that you want it to. Yeah. But it's still it's a little bit stronger than it was before. Okay. Yeah. One thing we were talking about is whether that um, the move that finishes people off below twenty five percent health, whether that would work around a uh, a taunt or not. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see that uh, when it gets tested a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so what do you think of the kit? I think the kit is really good. Um, I mean, the fact that it's that the window of opportunity is gated uh, below twenty five percent health, you get a, you get a somebody get another tune that's below twenty five percent health. Their chances are they're probably going to be dead. Yep. Uh, Anyway, but this is going to turn that. Um, I mean, seventy percent chance. Like, due to RNG, that that usually means like thirty percent chance for us. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> and a hundred percent for the computer. Yeah. So, so yeah, when we're fighting uh, the this new huntress, it's gonna it's gonna suck um, because she's gonna hit us with that every time. Yeah, but but uh, the fact that uh, that had, I don't know I think it gives the, the 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 real thing that shines on this character is the fact that uh, she every single one of her attacks doesn't matter if it's it's not gated by anything is that she can apply heal immunity and stop those revived characters. Yeah, I that agree. right there is, is is really really helpful. And the fact that she she may be you know firing her gigantic. Uh, crossbow at uh people just randomly through the through the through the fight yeah that's that's uh i like that also i agree i it's a nice change uh to her kit and i hope it revives a character that was pretty popular for a while um oh yeah kind of went yeah, by when, the wayside yeah yeah due to power creep over the <clears> over <throat> the all through time yeah yeah well let's move on to vixen Avatar of the Animal Kingdom. Uh, so let's talk about the superpowers. And uh, so the the first one is Tiger Claws, special damage to an enemy, reset power cooldowns. Uh, so what this means is essentially all her other powers who, when you use those, when you use one of the other powers, it essentially adds a cooldown to every one of her powers. So by using her basic, you can reset the cooldown of all her other powers. Um, and then really the legendary, which um, which by the way will help if let's say she, you get uh, an assist call from her, that'll automatically reset her powers so that you can use all the other ones again. So this would be a good reason to pair her with uh, assist call characters like uh, Black Mask will be coming up, um, Saint Walker, uh, so, makes sense to have them coming out same month. Um, 
Fury of the Bear. Um, let's see, where was I? Special damage and remove three positive immunities. Strike twice. Adds one cooldown to other superpowers. And that's what I was referring to before. And then the legendary 50% chance to apply buff immunity, which lasts one turn. And you can never go wrong with buff immunity. Nope, never. Uh, Flight of the Eagle. Special damage to an enemy and apply three evasion downs for two turns. And the move can't miss. Adds one cooldown to other powers. And the legendary is 25% chance enemy loses turn their turn meter. So in other words, you're taking all their turn meter away. And 75% chance if um, the target has three or more evasion downs. Uh, and it's interesting because I don't know if this move used to be can't miss. I'm pretty sure it was Might of the Rhino that couldn't miss. And I think you're right. Okay. So you are right. So that'll be a nice counter to the evasion tunes. Um, the Might of the Rhino damage to an enemy, apply two bleeds and gain six stamina ups for two turns. Apply 50% uh, extra damage if the target has five or more bleeds. Adds one cooldown to other powers and legendary 75% chance uh, to apply stun if the target is bleeding. And I believe that is hi slightly higher than what it was. If my memory serves me right, it used to be 60% chance to apply stun. So I think that went up uh, by 15%. And then she remains a turn team leader. 75% uh, chance to gain 30% turn meter up and apply 30% turn meter up to a random ally when an enemy gains a buff on their turn. Legendary is 50% increased stamina. So I, you know, one of the things I notice is what's odd is the ability to apply buff immunity on the fury of the bear, but then gaining turn meter from your enemy buffing themselves, which seems a little counterintuitive to me. It does, yeah. I, that that kind of stood out to me as well. Yeah, there's a lot of lot of uh, lot going on in her kit now. Um, but yeah, that seems like I don't know. That it doesn't seem like that. That's really going to be helpful. And it's it's funny because her kit reminds me of Bizarro's kit in in the sense that it's just kind of all over the map. Um, and I kind of like when a character has a a theme to them in terms of what they bring to a match and I'm not just saying this is going to be bad I mean she might be a great character but to me she seems all over the map yeah I, I agree it's, um, I have not seen uh, her tested yet I know that one of my teammates has done has done testing <clears throat> on her um, but uh, I don't know what the results of that are so I don't know I, I guess I see, but I see a lot of potential um, with you know she's going to have a lot of stamina, and she's going to be and now going to be able to uh, to distribute some of that stamina uh, to your team now as before. Yeah. I don't think she was able to do that before, was she? Not to my knowledge. Um... And then of course the tune, uh, anything that does turn meter, um, yeah, is always a uh, always good. The other but, thing I uh, see is. Um... Her HP is going to be 27,815 plus 10,650, which is a lot. That means she's in the 38,000 range. And if she's getting 50% increased stamina on top of that, that is one heck of a uh, HP count. That's, uh, that's actually a really good point. That is really, I didn't notice her hit points uh, earlier. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's uh, that could be. That could be what her her main function is is uh, someone to beat on while you're while you kick the other team's uh, you know rear. Exactly. Um, so we'll see what happens with her. Uh, she wasn't a character I was using a lot before. Not really strong character, so definitely in need of a rework. Uh, so we'll see how this one goes. Anything else yeah. you wanted to say about her? Uh, well, I've never really been a fan of the character. Um, I mean, I liked her in the Justice League cartoon years ago. Um, but as far as the tune goes, I whenever I would go try to cash in some of my PvP rewards, I would always get her. Uh, and <laughs> that you know, and I was like, man, I don't even want to use her. 
uh, so now that she's got a rework, you know, now she's got a huge stat boost, and her powers actually, you know, look fairly interesting, aside from that one point. Um, I don't know. I, I think she has real potential. Yeah. Especially now that she's going to have so much hit points that it's going to be ridiculous. Uh, I, th- I think that's really going to be her, her main strength, is that she's going to be really tough to take down. Uh, I agree. So, so that's... Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting to see. Um. Well, so um, so those are all the new characters and the reworks that have been done, and so what we'll do now is we're just gonna talk about the rest of what's going on this month in terms of tournaments and events. Um, and the first thing we'll start with is the PvP uh, board completion. This this month is Batman: World's Greatest Detective. Um, and one of the things we wanted to point out is there now seems to be, uh, a system for what happens with the person that is the board clear, because it's been very clear for the last three months that whoever has been the board clear has been one of the reworks next month. So, um, so it looks like Batman world's greatest detective will be a rework next month, which is interesting because he's already been reworked once. So this would actually be a second rework for him. It, yes, it would. Um, his his first rework, well, his rework um, is, is was better um, than uh, than what it was, but he just never was quite to the level of what Bat- I always thought Batman should be. Kind of like you know how I feel about Superman in the game. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so, so if they rework him, even if it's <clears> just a stat <throat> boost. Um, which I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of have mixed feelings about that. And yeah, sure, I want him to hit hard, and I want him to survive. Uh, but to have him be impossible to, to to take down because he's got a you know uh, a ridiculous amount of hit points, or he's got a really high strength now, just doesn't seem. This doesn't say Batman to me. I mean, yeah. I, here's why. I always thought that uh, you know if, if my Batman gets taken out easily, well, he's a human. So he's just a highly, highly trained human to peak yeah. levels. Of course, he's going to get taken out. He's he's just a guy running around in a bat suit. <laughs> so, I, I think the other problem he suffers from is people are really excited for the idea of being able to give true sight to the whole team, but he's just not fast enough. And so by yes, the time that, it gets around that, to his that, turn and you give true sight to your team, well, you're lucky if they haven't been wiped off the map already. Um, right. Uh, you know, one of the things I can think of that would really be helpful is either a increase the speed, which which we all know Batman should be fast. He should be one of the fastest Reds there is. Yeah. Um, um, Give him a way to gain turn meter. Right, turn meter, or have him have his leadership uh, bestow true sight at start of battle to the entire team. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that's uh, that could be one of the. the that could be one of the things they change it if they rework him, which, which I really hope they do because um, um, I'm anxious to have to be, to see Batman uh, more on the uh, on the you know on everybody's team. The other thing that's curious to me is you know so many people have been calling for the rework of Batman Cape Crusader, and it seems very strange to give treatment to World's Greatest Detective a second time before you've addressed Cape Crusader the first time. Yeah, I agree that they're the Cape Crusader has yet to even get a rework. Um, but I'm one of the few people that 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 believes that Cape Crusader is as is good as, as he is. Um, and I know I'm I'm going to be in the extreme minority in that. Uh, I mean, well, uh, even just a stat boost and the addition of a fifth ability might be um, good in his case. Oh well, I agree. I do agree that every work is called for. This is I'm I've, I'm totally happy with him as it is. Right. Um, yeah. He he is. That's one of the that's one of the reasons I, that's why I chose him for my first rebirth character um, is because I wanted him to, to. I gave him that little extra step boost, and uh, yeah, he's always done a good job for me. So um, I don't know. Uh, it's I, I I'm more anxious to see world's greatest detectives be more of a threat uh, than Cape Crusader that everybody has like you know like nine million sh- uh, frags <laughs> for them. 
Well, I, I can remember. I've been playing long enough when I remember uh, World's Greatest Detective was one of the junk characters in the in the shop where you could buy PvP or Alliance uh, frags. So that's, oh, that's how I was yeah. able to rebirth mine is um, uh, because of that. Uh, should we move on to the PvP t uh, tournaments? You want to handle the Wraith sure. tournaments? Sure. Let's see. Huntress is first up uh, uh, February 3rd through February 10th. Uh, she's going to be, with her rework, um, being actually pretty good. I see the competition level on her being pretty pretty stiff. Mm -hmm. Although, although at the same time... Uh, you Frags can get her right literally common. anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. That's that won't be one where I'm really pushing very hard. Yeah, me neither. I haven't. I have been up to. I'm almost to the point where I can probably rebirth her. So. Did you and see I'm, how many frags I have for her? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're swimming. <laughs> I think swimming I, in, in, they have in a hundreds. big surplus here. Let me bring her back up. Uh, where is she? Let's see. There she is. Yeah, so I have nineteen hundred and sixty-four over three ten. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, as you can. Too bad we can't spread those around to everybody that yeah, wants her. I, I wish they had the ability to share in an alliance. Um, yeah. yeah. All right. So second up is Booster Gold, which everybody's gonna go nuts for. Yes. That starts on February tenth to the seventeenth. Now, I for one have not taking full advantage of the fact that I can L4 him, like, right now. Uh, but I'm going to. Um, and I will roll pretty hard on that one. So, so I, I would like to get him to the point where I can L5 him and eventually rebirth him, because he is actually that good. Yeah. And then, let's see, the February 17th through the 24th, we have Vixen. Uh, and then... One that everybody's going to go insane for is Parallax uh, on the 24th through uh, the March uh, 2nd. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've been uh, just his um, doing his hero challenge alone um, has really shown me what he's capable of doing. He's going to be really tough to take down. Yeah. Um, the one disappointment for me is him as a raid character because... He doesn't do much damage, and I was joking that five times zero is zero. Um, so if somebody's doing <laughs> zero damage and you give them a five x multiplier, well, it's still zero damage. Um, exactly. But who knows? I might be wrong. The universe loves to prove me wrong, so um, maybe this will be one of those opportunities yeah, that does that. Yeah, it's just like with every raid um, strategies pop up here, like you know, after first or second day. Um, of how to pair him up with certain certain other characters to bring out certain strengths he didn't know existed. So I have a feeling that might be the case with Parallax. Maybe so. Maybe, yeah. I'm not going to be using him, so I don't really care. Well, I think he'll also but, be uh, some of the rewards for if if they continue it the same way they've done it. He should also be some of the rewards for the siege, or excuse me, raid that's about to start. And um, so that right. it gives gives us more opportunities to get fragments for him. Yep, yep. I'm anxious for him. I'm I'm a big fan of all the lanterns, so um, I, I I definitely want him. Uh, I just didn't really do very good in this last siege to take full advantage of him. I didn't push very hard either. I don't know why. I just wasn't thrilled this time. Um, yeah, work and strengths and everything with me. Um, that's pretty much why I wasn't able to devote a whole lot of time to it. That and um, I just didn't have very much, very good luck with matches. Yeah. So for showdown tournaments, there are two showdown tournaments this month, and they both involve Catwoman, uh, which is pretty cool because even though she hasn't been reworked as far as I can remember, she still remains a very strong character. Uh, so the first, the Legendary Showdown, will be February 13th through February 16th. And then the Heroic Showdown will be between February 27th and March 1st. Mm, very cool. So, yeah, and they have board players, board players on that one. It could be Nightwing, which is, you know, handy. Yeah, and I believe they removed him from the shop. I can't remember. In fact, we could take a I quick look. Did. 
Let's see if they took him out of the shop. Nope, he is still there. Uh, so extra opportunity to get some Nightwing um, shards, fragments, whatever you like to call them, pieces, chunks. Chunks. <laughs> <laughs> chunks of Nightwing. <laughs> um, uh, you want to cover the Blitz tournaments? Sure. Uh, let's see, February 7th through the 9th, we're going to have Villains Blitz. Um, which, in all honesty, I've been noticing a trend for quite a while that the villain, all the villain characters are more powerful than a lot of the he, uh, the, the hero characters. Right. At least, at least it is. That's the case in my roster, anyway. Like all my villains are way stronger than my heroes. Which I, when I first started playing this game, um, I had a real struggle with because I didn't like. I always wanted to have use all the heroes. Yeah. But yeah, that's just me. Uh, and then on the twenty first through the 23rd we have the heroes blitz so um those are two really good blitzes to do because yeah. um it really, it really divides your your roster and you have to come up with you know some interesting um ways to deal with like say for instance you're you you got uh, a bunch of evasion teams on your board and you're doing villains bl blitz and uh you don't have your Hal Jordan set to to get rid of you know to purge uh, that Harley Quinn or that Batgirl, so that's gonna you have to figure out you know, use use your wits about you and figure out how to way to get around that. So that makes it make, gonna make it fun. Yeah, the other the the one I don't like is the Aliens Blitz, uh, simply because it's too restrictive of the roster and doesn't allow for enough variation across affinities. Um, yeah, not a big fan it's of like that one. All three. I'm it's, I'm in agreement with you on that one definitely because it's I mean I the last one I did a little bit uh, on and I got a few I got a few shards here and there but um, yeah it, there's just not a whole lot of alien characters out there that are that's uh, that make a team out of them. Uh, so for this month the siege I hope you don't mind I'm jumping ahead because we're. We're yeah. running. We're getting close. We're about forty-five minutes, so I want to make sure we don't go over an hour. Uh, so the next one is the siege tournament. So your your free character this month is going to be Black Mask, and the siege character will be Cassandra Cain. Um, and so the siege will begin. Uh, actually, it begins Sunday. So just when you think you're going to be able to rest from raids, you're wrong. You get to start siege. <laughs> Uh, and that'll go all the way through the 24th of the month. Uh, bonus characters for the Siege, Cassandra Kane, Black Mask, Huntress, Vixen, Catwoman, Green Arrow Castaway, Killer Frost, and Gorilla Grodd. Hmm, Gorilla Grodd, what a strange one to throw in as a bonus. I thought that was a little strange myself. Um, most of the others are the... Uh, ugh. Can't speak all of a sudden. All the other selections are pretty good, but Grodd remains at the very back of my roster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's not even on my roster. No, you're not missing uh, much. <laughs> yeah. Damn dirty ape. Damn dirty apes. Um, so why don't we cover the other uh, hero challenges that are going on for the month? All right. Uh, let's see. Through the twenty, through the first, of, uh, and going on through the eleventh, uh, you got Black Mask Pulse Face Society, and then starting up again on the fifteenth, going through the twenty-fifth, you got Ebony Max. The second part to that challenge. Um, for the sixteen challenges, uh, interesting. We have Arcus. Uh, going to be going through the eighth through the 14th and I believe the the uh, the six day challenges are the ones that you can do uh, like multiple times like again yeah. and again and again yeah you can fresh uh, over and over yeah we can I can see a lot of um, rebirth uh, Arcus is running around after this I can too um, yeah which is fine uh, it's, he, he's he's scary again um, but there's ways around him and then we got Two Face, which is an interesting character I don't really use very much. Uh, 
So his, his, his challenge is the duality challenge, and that's going on from the 29th going on into March 6th. And the one I'm very interested in is the Riddler extravaganza. I am too. Gives you Riddler. Yeah, it gets you, gets you some Riddler frags for going on from the 25th. Wait a minute. The date's wrong. Well, Sometimes, it's probably, yeah, it's got to be yeah, 125 through the beginning of March because um, they do let them bleed over into the next month sometimes. But that's definitely yeah. not right. <laughs> Unless they're warping yeah. in time. <laughs> that boy, that's fun. Uh, so the, going through the 25th through the, through the 31st. So um, here, maybe some, the basis of which you, you can clear up for me, the team challenge, is that, is that the one where they split it between a normal and a... And a uh, that's right. A legendary? Yeah, that's right. So it gives you two think, opportunities to get fragments. And, uh, that's good. Sort of providing a bonus for people who have really upgraded their roster. Um, incentivizes people to do that. Yeah, and here I think this is the this list here is the the eligibility list for the Riddler challenge. Um, we got Ares, Barda, Black Manta, Booster Gold, Brainiac, General Zod, Gorilla God again, Green Arrow cast away again, uh, Lex Luthor Assault War Suit, not Survival Suit, uh, Mirror Master. Well, you don't ever see him. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Miracle, also you never see him. Uh, Ocean Master, Alman, oh, that's gonna be nice. Reverse Flash, and Talia Al Ghul. That's a pretty interesting uh, uh, eligibility list there. There's also uh, Ultraman and Wonder Woman, Princess of Themyscira. They kind of got bled over into the other page a little bit. Um, yeah, there we are. Yeah, P Wonder Woman POT. Yeah, very good. Yeah. I, I am excited for this one. I know a lot of people might think that Riddler is a, a junk character, so to speak. But um, he actually has a lot of utility in raids because he can put a lot of agility downs on people. Um, and so you can put the agility downs on the raid boss, which lowers the raid boss defense and makes you where you can do a little bit more damage. Uh, so he does have some utility there. Um, and, and plus he's been, you can see, I've been in the game long, long time. I don't even have enough frags for him for Legendary 3. So he's a pretty rare character. And, I, and in general, even if a character is not great, I just like the idea of one that I can farm, that I haven't uh, had a chance to get him as high as I would like. I guess that's the yeah, collector see. in me. Yeah, they, exactly. Exactly that. <clears throat> So it looks like a good month ahead. Uh, I'm not thrilled for the month, but I'm also not disappointed in the month. Yeah, same here. Um, I have to admit that uh, re looking over Cassandra Kane, I do have a lot more hope for her being interesting and fun to play than I did before when I when it was first announced that that she's going to be our be our uh, character. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to mind as much fighting siege uh, for her than I would have previously. Yeah, I, I think her kit looks pretty good too. I think I'll go a little harder for her than I did for Parallax. Um, yeah, same here. Well, cool. Uh, so it looks like a good month ahead and I wanna thank you for joining me again. This has been fun and I look I look forward to doing this each month with you so that we can clown around and make fun of the game, make fun of each other. And, <laughs> um, Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, this was a lot of fun. I really thank you for uh, uh, inviting me to tag along and, uh, and get my, uh, my, my opinions on, uh, on, on these, uh, these characters and the game in general and God, whatever else I have opinion on. Well, I appreciate the comic book knowledge that you bring to it as, I'm trying to catch up and um, I'm getting there, but I got a ways to go. So I uh, appreciate you bringing that. If you enjoyed no the, if, sorry, if you enjoyed the video, uh, please leave a like. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, uh, please subscribe to my channel as I'm always trying to put out new content. 
And again, I want to mention the Patreon page, which I, ch I just started at patreon.com slash bizarro style. And remember, bizarro is one Z, two R's, which is something people often reverse with two Z's and one R. Uh, but anyway, no thank you for joining us, and we won't see you next time.